In this question, we're told that a scientist has 290 grams of rubidium, Rb, and 20.4 grams of nitrogen, N2, and measures that 119 grams of rubidium nitride, Rb3N, is made. Our eventual goal is figuring out what is the percent yield of rubidium nitride. Okay, so we've got lots of steps here. Our first step is simply to balance our equation. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my table for doing that. I've got my elements, my reactants, and my products. Okay, so to start with, I have one rubidium on the left and I have two nitrogens on the left because I've got N2 and then in my products I've got RB3N so three rubidium and one nitrogen. Okay so currently none of our elements are balanced. Since I have N2 on the left I'm going to go ahead and add some more nitrogen on the right by having two of our product there. So let's go ahead and recalculate now that I've made that intelligent guess of what might help to balance this out. So I still have one rubidium in the reactants and two nitrogen. In the products I now have two sets of RB3N. So that's two sets of three rubidiums which is six rubidiums and two nitrogens. Okay so now our nitrogens are once again balanced but our rubidiums are not. So I need six rubidiums on the left where currently I only have one. So I'm going to add a 6 on the left on my rubidium and let's just check to make sure that that has balanced out our equation before we check our answers. So we now have 6 rubidiums on the left and 2 nitrogens. On the right we've got 2 sets of RB3N, so that's 2 times 3 which is 6 rubidiums and 2 nitrogens. Great, so our rubidiums are balanced, our nitrogens are balanced, that means my whole equation is balanced and I can go ahead and lock in those numbers. So we've got six rubidiums, one N2 gives two RB3N. Our next step is to figure out the limiting reactant. To do that, we need to know how many moles of each of our reactants we have, and then we need to use that along with the equation to figure out which one we don't have enough of. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to figure out how many moles of rubidium we have. So I'm going to write a little... I'm going to make my own little box here. We need to figure out the moles of rubidium and we need to figure out the moles of nitrogen in our reactants. So I start with 290 grams of rubidium and 20.4 grams of nitrogen. Let's go to the periodic table and check our relative atomic masses for rubidium and nitrogen. Here's rubidium and here's nitrogen. So rubidium has a relative atomic mass of 84.57, nitrogens is 14.01. So rubidium has a relative atomic mass of 85.47 grams per mole. And nitrogens is 14.01 grams per mole. So let's convert the grams of rubidium first. Since rubidium doesn't have anything else in its formula, it's just Rb, the molar mass of rubidium is the same as the relative atomic mass. So that means 85.47 grams of rubidium is equal to one mole of rubidium. So that's going to be our conversion factor that we're going to use to figure out how many moles of rubidium we have. So we've got 290 grams of rubidium. Let me draw my dimensional analysis table. And I want grams of rubidium on the bottom so that it will cancel out and moles of rubidium on the top because that's what I'm trying to find. And we know that one mole of rubidium is equal to 85.47 grams of rubidium. So I'm going to cancel my units that are the same top and bottom, which is grams of rubidium. I'm left with just moles of rubidium, which is good because that's what I'm trying to find. So I'm going to do that calculation. 290 times one mole of rubidium divided by 85.47. So putting that in my calculator, that gets me 3.39 moles of rubidium. So I'm gonna fill that into my little gap that I made here. 
that's how many moles of rubidium we have in our reactants to start with. Now let's do the same for nitrogen. Now in nitrogen, N2, we have two nitrogens. So we're going to need two times nitrogens, which is two times 14.01, which gives us 28.02 grams per mole as our molar mass for nitrogen. So that tells us 28.02 grams of N2 is equal to one mole of N2. So there's our conversion factor for nitrogen. And I'm starting with 20.4 grams of nit nitrogen from the question. So I'll draw my dimensional analysis table. I'm putting grams of nitrogen on the bottom because I want that to cancel out and moles of nitrogen on the top because that's what I'm trying to find. I know that one mole of nitrogen is equal to 28.02 grams of nitrogen. So I'm going to cancel my grams of nitrogen on the top and the bottom. That gets me 20.4 times 1 divided by 28.02 moles of N2, which gets me 0 0.73 moles of nitrogen. So we've got 0 0.73 moles of nitrogen. Okay, so that was my first step. I figured out how many moles of rubidium and how many moles of nitrogen I have to start with. Next, I need to figure out which of these is a limiting reactant. So to do that, I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to figure out how much of the other would I need to react completely with it. So I'm going to pick the moles of nitrogen and I'm going to convert that into how much rubidium I would need to react fully. So these are my two uh, parts that I'm using. So we've got six rubidiums and one nitrogen together. So that tells me six moles of rubidium and one mole of nitrogen. That's my conversion factor. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got 0 0.73 moles of N2. Let's draw out my dimensional analysis table again. I've got moles of N2 on the bottom because I'm trying to cancel that out and moles of rubidium on the top because that's what I'm trying to find. I have six moles of rubidium equals one mole of N2. I'm cancelling the moles of N2 and I'm multiplying this out. So I've got 0 0.73 times 6 moles of rubidium divided by 1. That gives me 4.38 moles of rubidium. Okay, so I figured out that if I have 0 0.73 moles of N2, I need 4.38 moles of rubidium to react fully. So if we look at how much moles of rubidium we actually have, we have 3.39. That means we don't have enough rubidium to react with the nitrogen that was provided. That means that rubidium must be our limiting reactant. So our limiting reactant is going to be rubidium. Now that we know that rubidium is the limiting reactant, we can figure out our theoretical yield by using rubidium, the amount of rubidium provided, and converting that to find how much product would we get from that. So it's the limiting reactant that we use when we're figuring out our theoretical yield. So the limiting reactant is rubidium, and we're trying to get RB3N. So we've got six rubidiums for two RB3N. So our conversion factor will be six moles of rubidium equals two moles of RB3N. So that is our conversion factor that we'll be using. Since we have six and two, we could divide both of those by two and end up with a ratio of three to one. We would get the same answer. So I'm just going to leave it as six and two so you can see how I would do it this way. But if you prefer to cancel these down and get three and one, that also works. They're the same thing. It's the same ratio. Okay, so I already figured out I had 3.39 moles of rubidium. And I need to convert this into, firstly, 
moles of rubidium nitride and then mass of rubidium nitride to find my theoretical yield. So my first step is to draw my dimensional analysis table with two columns for firstly converting the moles of rubidium to the moles of rubidium nitride and then for converting moles of rubidium nitride to mass of rubidium nitride. So I'm putting moles of rubidium on the bottom and on the top I've got moles of rubidium nitride because that's what I'm trying to find. Okay, and we know that six moles of rubidium gives two moles of rubidium nitride. Okay, wonderful. So we've got the moles of rubidium nitride. Finally, we need to find the mass of rubidium nitride. To do that, we're going to need to know the molar mass of rubidium nitride. So in rubidium nitride, we've got three rubidiums and one nitrogen. So that's three lots of 85.47, which is the relative atomic mass of rubidium, plus one lot of 14.01, which is the relative atomic mass of nitrogen. That gives me 270.42 grams per mole for my molar mass of rubidium nitride. Which tells me that 270.42 grams of rubidium nitride, RB3N, is equal to one mole of rubidium nitride, RB3N. So that is now my conversion factor that I'm using in my dimensional analysis table. So I've got moles of rubidium nitride on the bottom. I've got grams of rubidium nitride on the top. I know that one mole is equal to 270.42 grams. So I'm now canceling moles of rubidium on the top and bottom, canceling moles of rubidium nitride on the top and the bottom. That gives me 3.39 times two times 270.42 grams of rubidium nitride divided by six times one, which gives me an answer of 305.57 grams of rubidium nitride. Okay, so let's fill that out as our theoretical yield, 305.57 grams. Awesome, okay. So we finally found our theoretical yield of rubidium nitride. We also need to know the actual yield of rubidium nitride, which is given in the question. That's the amount measured that was made, which was 119 grams. So that's our actual yield. Finally, we just need to find our percent yield. So let's go to our reference sheet to find the percent yield equation. The percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. So our percent yield is equal to the actual yield, the yield actual, divided by the theoretical yield, yield theoretical, times 100%. So our percent yield is going to be equal to our actual yield, which is 119 grams, divided by our theoretical yield, which is 306 grams, times 100%. That gets us a percent yield of 38.9%. Okay, so these questions are quite challenging because there are loads of steps in here. Our first step was balancing our equation. Then we needed to convert our grams of our reactants into moles. So we knew how many moles of our reactants we had at the beginning. Then we had to do a conversion to figure out for one of those reactants, how much of the other would we need to react completely. Then we used that to figure out which was our limiting reactant. From there, we used the limiting reactant to calculate the theoretical yield of our product then we found the actual yield of our product from the amount measured in the question, and finally calculated our percent yield using those theoretical and actual yields. So loads of steps here. You wanna make sure you're really confident on the previous skills before you attempt these, because this puts all of those different pieces together into one question.